We've been driving all day and we've bloody made it. G'day and welcome back to another episode. Join us this week as we head off the beaten path into Warra Station, which sits on the southern end of the Ningaloo Reef. We put in a few big driving days to get here from Durian Bay and we arrived at the station gate around an hour before sunset. It was a bit nerve wracking approaching dusk while still having around 20 kilometres of uncharted station road and sand tracks to deal with as the daylight faded and a distant storm closed in, which actually turned out to be a tropical cyclone, but we were completely unaware. Anyway, we closed in on our camp for the night as the sun was setting and it set the stage for a beautiful start to our Ningaloo adventure this year. any better way to welcome us to the freaking Ningaloo than this sunset. Oh my god. Lightning. Been raining all day on our drive. We've been driving all day and we've bloody made it. Tadsy, how do you feel? <laughs> Epic. Oh, home for a week. to another episode and in this one we're staying at Warrit Station. Now Warrit Station is a huge station on the southern end of the Ningaloo coast. You can stay at the actual homestead or like us you can come out to one of the many bush style beach camps that are scattered along the station's coastline here. Um, the one that we're staying at this time around is Sandy Point Campground. It's right... Oh. It's right on the beach here, so it's perfect to launch a boat like we can now because we are boat people. But holy dooly, the flies are absolutely atrocious. I think it's about 40 degrees or something, and it's stunning, but the fly... Oh, <laughs> I actually got one in my mouth. <laughs> There's no escaping them. That's why I'm glad I've got this thing. <laughs> they just love all the wet crevices. Ugh. But yeah, the campsites here are so awesome because you've got your caravan right there in these like kind of little nooks so you have your own space and then you look out to that beautiful Ningaloo blue water. It just blows our mind every time we see it and we can just easily get Big Red, pump her up and just launch straight into the water which is what we're going to do today and we are so excited. I hope these flies out aren't out there in the ocean though. <laughs> Do you have anything to say? This is just epic. <laughs> this is like everything we dreamed of last year. I mean, last year was really good, but this year we're able to do so much more with the boat and just really capitalize on the area. And uh, we're gonna be able to do it really properly because we're here for a lot longer. I cannot wait for the next few months. <laughs> We have 
have no idea what we're doing today, but hey, we're just happy as Larry to be out here and doing this. What do you mean, Brad? We're boating. I know we're boating, but like, you can go fishing, you can go spear fishing, you can go free diving, you can go scurfing if we had three people. Something I do want to do. But you can just do so much, but everything just looks 10 out of 10. So we've just anchored here in this little hole. 14 mile beach is actually just behind us there, probably a kilometre. We just come across the um, across a little break in the reef here and just punched it over. Just driving around, just having a look. And I think we're gonna wait for that anchor to get tight, make sure we're not moving anywhere and go for a, a snorkel around here. No one else, oh, no one else around. It's just the best. Well guys, I'm not about the bank. I'm just trying to escape from the flies crawling into my crevices. It's it's crazy. The flies that we have we have we were really lucky last year when we um headed up north in WA that we didn't get bombarded with flies. But this year we've got flies everywhere. And when the flies go away at night time, the moths come out in plague proportions. It's crazy. But anyway, this year the Ningaloo. It was so good. It was so kind to us last year. We loved it so much. We have such a, we feel such a connection to this place that we just made it a priority that we had to come back here this year. So we know like this coast back to front and we know where the best sites are as well. So over the next few months, we're gonna be here for quite some time. We're gonna highlight all these camps, all the best camps, all the best sites and give you a pretty comprehensive idea of what it's like and how to book the Ninglu experience because it's such a massively sought after place it's so hard to get bookings here so if we can give you guys a game plan on how to how to go about it and a bit of information on how to book your Ninglu experience um, yeah we think that's a pretty valuable resource so this is Sandy Point Campground there's 14 sites here I think five or six of them are a beachfront though, like this one. And this is really what you want when you come in here. So I think it's site two to four and then site seven to nine are really the sites you want here at Sandy Point if you're looking for this secluded um, beachfront experience. Drop your boat in, take off in your paddle boards out to the reef. Like, yeah, it's, um, it's, it does have a lot on offer here. I took some drone shots the sites up to the north they are a bit bigger sites but they are situated about 100 meters back off the beach so that would be sites 10 to 14 and there's also two sites where if it's blowing its head off and you're looking for some refuge there's two sites just up there behind the dune there sites five and six they wouldn't be any good on a day like today or on a week like this week where there's just like 40 degree days flat out Jeez, I hope these flies aren't giving you guys as much anxiety as I am, having them crawl all over me. Um, so yeah, those sites up the back there, good if you're trying to get away from the wind, but definitely not good if it's a hot week like it is this week. So this today's actually our last day here because we got a cancellation booking. We could only get a certain amount of time. We're actually gonna move further up the coast tomorrow to 14 Mile Beach, which is another really popular camp along this coastline. I would say these, these two are pretty comparable except for out here you cannot go fishing spear fishing rock lobster catching anything it's a sanctuary zone so 
that is bad if you're a fisherman and you want to be out there catching fish and putting food on the plate but it's really good if you're in diving and snorkeling because the fish and marine life out there is just so abundant so anyway speaking of food this morning we're all about simple meals when we're camping off grid for long periods of time trying to save as much water as possible and one of patsy and myself's favorite little breakfasts um, recently is super quick super easy breakfast mexican tacos or breakfast mexican burritos all it is is like scrambled egg with a bit of cumin in there um, bacon avocado whatever you want on a wrap and that will keep us going for the rest of the day so. A beautiful day out here on the water finally the wind has turned and it's coming from the west so it's gonna blow the flies away on the shore and hopefully cool things down a bit that wind coming over the water so it seems to cool it down a lot than when it's coming off the land but um, we've got a little diving flag up and we've come out to a pretty popular spot which is only a K and a half two k's off the beach here and uh, seems like a popular spot every time I have the drone up and every time I look out here there's a boat out here so it's got to be good and I can see Fishies from the boat here. Can I hop in now? Yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> you did a backflip. <laughs> Not graceful. Oh. After spending ages fiddling with the engine, Brad just took it out for a test run and by the looks of it, he's put himself in the drink. I saw him trying to start it out there again for ages and I still can't see out on him again. So now he's swimming it back. Not the way we wanted to start our boating life on the Ninglu. Okay, I'm all hot and sweaty and bothered but not as bothered as i was 15 minutes ago i tell you what i wouldn't have been talking to the gopro then um just pulled the boat up the beach and carried the engine all the way up the beach it's pretty um awkward to say the least but it's just giving me some trouble today i heard something wasn't quite right with it it was missing a little bit um and it just progressively got worse throughout the day so we had this engine in for a service at a marine place in Bustleton. And we paid $675 for this engine to have a complete overhaul, everything looked at, all the seals changed, carburetor cleaned. I just wanted peace of mind and I wanted the mechanic to tell me if there was anything that he thought was wrong with it um, because we're going into some pretty remote territory. First outing, I noticed one of these spark plug boots was in the uh, bottom of the cowling there and the spark plug was finger tight so they hadn't even bothered um, tightening up one of the spark plugs which was a bit of a red flag and uh, didn't give me much confidence in their workmanship and then today obviously we're just having those issues i did notice the other day the first time we took it out there was quite a lot of oil or 
residue in the bottom of the cowling here. Maybe there was a bit of residue left over from when they were working on it. But in actual fact, it was this little screw here, this bottom screw on the, uh, I guess that's the bottom of the bowl of the carburetor. Um, and what that was doing, it was just had a slow leak. So it was just dripping. I just grabbed that and that was finger tight too. That bolt was not fully tight. Um, it was probably finger tight, just like the bloody spark plug. And uh, yeah, pretty disappointing, but hopefully that was all that was wrong with it and it'll fire up tomorrow morning because we are moving down the beach. We've still got heaps of fuel. We still want to do heaps of boating and uh, would have been pretty disappointing to have major engine troubles, but hopefully, fingers crossed, that fixes the issue. But it's just disappointing. You put your trust and your faith in these businesses that are supposed to know more than you and they just fall short every time. I don't know who's working on it, but hey, hopefully we've got it figured. I do need a beer. I need 10 of these. <laughs> Good morning from the beautiful Ningaloo. It is moving day for us today. So we're just heading up the beach like 5Ks all the way up to um, 14 Mile Beach. Just There's so much wildlife here. There's just fish busting up. It's, it's hard to stay focused, but we've got the boat. We're gonna try and put the boat on the roof to save me having a punch across because the wind doesn't drop until midday today and it may not drop at all. So um, rather than punching across the opening to the ocean in the choppy water, might just try and save ourselves a bit of time and lift the boat up on the roof. I think it's possible. We just need to work out how to pivot it and where to uh, best maneuver it. So let's try and figure that out. Well, that looks absolutely ridiculous, but hey, it works and it went up so easy. Um, and that just saves us so much time today. Oh my God, it looks so ridiculous. <laughs> That's so good. Check it out. Just like that, we're all hitched up and ready to make the short drive up to the highly rated 14 mile beach. We'll show you why that is on the next episode, but for now, consider leaving a like and comment and subscribe if you're not already as it's the best way to support our channel. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next one.